morning folks welcome to episode oh gosh I think we're up to six and I now have 20 subscribers thanks to you and I think also thanks to a troll who found me yesterday telling me to kill myself to my trolls and the haters out there I say be a little bit more original in your criticism really that's the best you got it only tells me I am doing the right thing if you are gunning for me so I want to tackle something today and it's about taking the behaviors that myself or any of my mentally ill or bipolar brothers and sisters do personally. You need to not. It's not about you. It's not about the things that you do or say. It's about us. It's about how we feel with our brains at any given moment in time. It's not something that anyone said to us. It's, it's like I said, it's how we feel. You know, people who know me well and are closest to me know that I'm in a really good place in terms of my work, my illness, but they also know that when it comes to my work, I throw everything I have into my patients into the eight hours a day that I'm seeing my patients. And being working in psychiatry, that takes a lot out of me to carry what people share with me. So that when I get home, I'm a little wiped out. And I, some days I don't have a lot to give because I'm so mentally exhausted. And you know, living with Bipolar is this lifelong invisible illness. So I have to put a lot into self-care. And self-care sometimes is hard to understand. Self-care sometimes means I just need to go crawl into bed and I just need to ignore the world. Sometimes self-care means I just want to sit and talk while someone else cooks dinner. Hi, honey. Um, sometimes self-care means I have the patience to answer a few questions that the kids pose at me and then I'm like, I need silence. You guys, I love you, but you're loud. It's three boys. Boys are loud. Um, it can look like a lot of things and it can look different every single day of the week, depending upon my needs. And um, yeah, I'll be the first to admit, self-care is selfish, but that's what it is um, because this disease, you can't always see it and it may be dormant, but it's always a nipperzent and um, it always has the ability to rear its ugly head. Just because my symptoms are stable doesn't mean I'm going to be cured. Taking care of myself and taking care of yourself, you know, means avoiding triggering s situations whenever possible. It means sometimes I'm a no-show for events. And sometimes I'm a last minute no show because you know, I'm all dressed, I'm all ready to go, makeup's on, hair's done, got the purse picked out, the shoes are sassy. But then I'm like, I, 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 I can't do this. There's too many people there that I don't know. There's just too many unknown factors. What if, what if there's no one that I can talk to? What if my husband's gonna get dragged into a conversation and I'm, I'm there left to myself? You know, I, I create all these scenarios in my head and then I just, nope, not doing it. And it's no disrespect to the host or the hostess. It's all me. And it also means that on occasion, I'm gonna walk out of an event early or I'm gonna to retreat to a quiet space because I'm overwhelmed, I'm upset, I feel down, I feel my speech is starting to get pressured or whatever it takes to stop the symptom that I, I, Anne, might be feeling. I also don't always do well with the pressure to talk. It means I avoid the phone whenever possible. I don't like talking on it. I'm getting a little better at it, but then I still go through phases where I'm not gonna pick up. You're gonna do better if you text me if you really want me. And my voicemail requests that people text me. And even then, I still may not answer if I'm just in a bad space and feeling pressured. You know, I honestly save all my effort for my work day first. Because, you know, money, bills, 
stuff like that, and for my children and my husband. And my precious sweet husband is going to tell you, he seriously gets the short end of the stick when it comes to quality conversation time with me. And he's a saint. I have no idea some days why he sticks around. But he is a saint. He is the love of my life. And I don't know what I'd do without him. And I think there's other people out there like me who have that person that they don't know what they would do without because they stick around in spite of our illness, in spite of our behaviors, in spite of our ability to function a lot of the times. And this doesn't mean that, you know, I or we don't care tremendously because we do. And I do. I care very much about my family and friends. I just, I'm not good at showing it. In fact, I'm horrible at showing it. I'm still learning, you know, we're what, six years in, how to live a life managing symptoms and emotions. I find it a challenge to express myself fully as I negotiate more and more time with stability. Don't ever take silence personally. Don't ever take stupid things that I say personally. Just understand and celebrate that I got through another day one step at a time. Don't take it personally that sometimes I need to converse with just myself. I have a great, I have put a great deal into making myself whole again. And until I can trust this period of stability, I'm always going to be number one. I'm going to be the number one priority. Family slash work is going to be number two. Work will probably win out because they pay me. And, you know, my friends, no matter how much I adore you and love you, you're going to be a little bit farther down that road. And I think a lot of people in my situation are going to vouch that it's the exact same way for them. Excuse me, nose itch. Um... But yeah, we say stupid things. We don't know how to prioritize. We just can be awkward. And it's hard to get people to understand that. It's hard to get people on board with that. And you know what? That's okay too. It just helps us weed out the tried but true people. And... um I'm grateful for my tried but true tribe. And they know who they are. And they will always be there. They've come running at a moment's notice from several states away just because I'm not feeling well. And I've said, I need you. And I suspect you out there just like me have those people and are grateful for them. But it's all about learning. Whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we can't do, whatever we can't say, don't take it personally. Because it's our illness. As functional as we may be, as upright as we may be every day, as much as we show up and we get we're present every day, it's the illness. And don't ever forget that. All right. Till next time, we'll see you tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to like, share, and as always, subscribe. I'm so grateful to you, my viewers.